I told myself I wasn't going to create another Outer Wilds video. I've already done my Outer Wilds video. I don't need to do another one. I mean, it was one of my earlier videos, and, well, I get into that mood where I think about all the things I could have improved, like adding a bit more detail, making it a bit longer, and I wish I had a better audio setup back then. The video is alright, and I like what I accomplished with it, but I kind of wished I had more time in the video to focus more on my favorite game ever, more than just this comparative study on Hades. And frankly, there's far too many Outer Wilds videos out there. Like, way, way, way too many. It's oversaturated, even if the community has a voracious appetite for any and all Outer Wilds content. My philosophy on this channel has always been to pick topics few people are really talking about, or angles I know that haven't been explored. Even that other video was an attempt to tackle the latter, since nobody was really talking about ludonarrative loops that much. I know I'm just going to create this thing, edit it, figure out a good thumbnail, put it out on YouTube, and it might get 800 to 1,000 views. You know, just like my other video. But, you know what? I don't really care. It's too important a game, too important a topic, and well, goddammit, I just want to make another Outer Wilds video. I truly want to share more of my perspective, and more importantly, what drives the community as a whole. That's my angle, and, I don't know, maybe more people will appreciate that. First, a spoiler warning. Or rather, an appeal to play this fantastic game before you watch this video. I know, I know, some of you are like me and hate it when somebody is too pushy about playing or watching something. You get all these recommendations from various friends or strangers. Maybe you put it on your Steam wish list. Maybe you even buy it and stuff it into a closet with all the other uninstalled Steam games. But I think this game has taught me, more than any other, that I just need to sometimes shut off my rebelistic tendencies and just listen when somebody says a game is great and worth playing. I know I've been burned by that sort of thing before, with games that end badly, ones with flaws I can't tolerate, or ones that I just don't get. But the risk of failure is worth installing something new that might just change your perspective on how games work, or change your perspective on life in general. This game has really changed people, and though there's no guarantee that this will be your own experience, I can say that there's a very good chance that you'll really enjoy this game. And just to reinforce that opinion, let me show you what others have said. I went in pretty much completely blind. I hadn't even really seen what the game looked like before playing it. And I could not thank myself enough for the experience I allowed myself to have by doing so. I can say without a doubt that this is one of the best games I have ever played. And that is the consensus among everyone who experienced it the same way I did. The profound sense of discovery this game invokes is entirely unmatched. Surely many who will watch this video to completion have already completed Outer Wilds, but I'm willing to bet that you, the person I wish to speak to directly, saw the thumbnail, the title, and wondered how a single game could elicit a more visceral reaction from me than any other, shaking me to the fabric of my core. Before my playthrough of Outer Wilds, I was in that exact position. I looked around to see all of my friends, people I have the utmost respect for, praise the game as if each of them had a profoundly irreplicable experience. And I wanted to understand why. Uh, before we start, uh, a couple things about the game. So Outer Wilds is one of the greatest games ever made. And that's it. No qualifier, no cutaway to it also sucks, nothing like that. Um, it's a legitimately a masterpiece. It is genuinely one of the best games I've ever played. And it's not only one of the best games I've ever played, um, it's also a game that I think almost anyone could enjoy. We are discussing The Outer Wilds, which I would not only argue is a better game, than the Outer Worlds, different, but better, but also one of the best sci-fi games ever made. I truly believe that it is one of the best sci-fi games ever made, and it is up there in my top 10 games. Yes, I put the Outer Wilds up there with Mass Effect, Bioshock, the first Last of Us game, Near Automata, Halo 3, Bloodborne. Outer Wilds is an experience that I have not gotten in a video game in years. It is a game that I think almost anybody could enjoy, and at the same time, 
is one of the best sci-fi games out there. It is the textbook definition of I wish I could wipe my memory and replay it again. It took me a long time to connect with Outer Wilds. I initially purchased it because on the surface it seemed like a nice relaxing game to calm me during what was an incredibly anxious period in my life. As it turned out though, playing it did the opposite of that. The unknown of the solar system mixed with the impending dread of what is coming proved to be more than I could handle, and over time the very idea of booting it up gave me a tightness in my chest so I left it behind. For a long time. That all changed a couple of weeks ago when I finally decided to do it. It didn't matter how I felt, I would just push past it and see it through. And after making my first meaningful connection between two seemingly random bits of information, the game clicked in a big way and I became hooked. For a week straight I couldn't put it down, and I constantly sent excited updates to my friends no matter how small they were. I finally got it. That was beautiful. <laughs> I need a minute. If I'm understanding the ending correctly. That was probably the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. In a game. Oh, we got we get happy music on these credits because it wasn't a game over credits. You know, it didn't it didn't click until I was trying for the end. What a good concept for a game. Oh, what a great game, dude. What a phenomenal playthrough. I, I, I might be biased, but I, I, I never say this. With all the things that I, ha that happened, all the crazy moments and the wild things that went on, this has to be, God, one of the, one of the, not only best games I've played in a long while, but one of the best playthroughs I've ever done. You know? And I'm glad I finished it. Outer Wilds is an unforgettable game that not enough people have played and that you should experience for yourself. If you haven't, know that I'm about to spoil the whole thing. So feel free to clock out now while you still can. So if you're here and you haven't played the game, I want to say to you in big capital letters, stop watching, drop everything, play this game. Trust me. On June 2024, five years after the game released, Mobius issued what is expected to be their final patch to Outer Wilds. While the news came with a bunch of minor bug fixes and updates, it also came with a rather cryptic note. Those that know would catch the references to Stein's Gate. I am a scientist! And maybe with enough searching, you might find the hidden Easter egg on Giant's Deep. It's so cool! But seriously, this thing is so hidden that you'll probably need to look at a video like this one. Son of a bitch! Anyway, after finding this banana-powered scroll device, you'll be presented with this message. To all those who have streamed and clipped their playthroughs, I offer my humble thanks. Thank you for discovering the anomalies within this world line. Subsequent world lines have been improved thanks to you. This may be my last venture into this world, so I leave you with this. Enjoy the journey, friend. L. Sai Kongru it's just as much a message to the fans as it is another extended Steins Gate reference, including the final phrase and the shape of the message. But while Steins Gate references are intriguing, I'm more interested in talking about the developer's message to the Outer Wilds community itself. The developers are proud at what they created, pouring their heart and soul into producing what has become my favorite game of all time. And they're grateful to their fans for spending their own efforts, publishing playthroughs on every platform, producing artwork and remixes, moderating social media communities. Their efforts have been just as much a part of the success of Outer Wilds 
as their fantastic game design, story, and music of the game itself. Stardew Valley is a comfort game. It is a game to relax with. It is a game to get sucked into on a long holiday weekend when work was too much that week. But Outer Wilds changed people. People like Elden Ring. People like Stardew Valley. But people revere Outer Wilds. Let's dive into how great this community is. One of the biggest aspects of Outer Wilds is that 100% of the gameplay mechanics are gated by knowledge alone. There's no extra abilities to acquire, or keys, or gems that unlock new moves, just knowledge. Of course, when knowledge is the only gate towards progress, there has to be gatekeepers to keep that knowledge hidden. So one of the first things you'll notice while diving into comments or communities related to Outer Wilds is the almost fanatical amount of protection around spoilers. Hell, I practiced this in the spoiler warning section of this video, and as you may have noticed, it's almost a ubiquitous detail of any Outer Wilds video or playthrough you'll find. The Reddit community has a strong moderation on spoilers, with their own separating tags and making sure spoiler comments that go outside the tag system are properly hidden. Some communities even have separate sections between the main game playthrough and the DLC, just to make sure people who haven't played the DLC aren't spoiled. People who have played the game, and are talking with those who haven't, just know that they have to try to encourage them to play with as much vagueness as possible, only revealing spoilers in hushed tones with the people who know. First-time playthroughs on Twitch and YouTube typically have heavy moderation, keeping the spoilers from the players themselves. The more well-behaved chatters always know to reply with the four-eyed smiley, as if to say, I know what this is about, and you don't, and I'm just amused at your response. I hate it when we tell you you're wrong, but what do you think about telling when you're correct? Just don't tell me anything. <laughs> Just smile. <laughs> uh, you know, if you give me knowledge in any way, that's pretty much a spoiler. <laughs> Just enjoy the stream as it goes. It's not all gloomy, serious moderation, though. The communities themselves have always been very friendly to new players, knowing exactly how much information to give them. Just enough to put them back on the path. Most know how hard the ATP puzzle is, how quote-unquote the bottleneck at the midway point of the Echoes of the Eye can give players a hard time, or how many just don't know how to navigate the scarier parts of Echoes of the Eye. And every Outer Wilds community I've seen has had zero toxicity, as chill as Gabbro. Over the years, Annapurna Interactive, the Outer Wilds publisher, has produced some official merch, like t-shirts, postcards, or this one camper's patch. Some of it is pretty cool, such as this Echoes of the Eye t-shirt that looks like a metal band cover. But as much as I appreciate that this is out there, they, um, don't seem to understand or respect their audience. Annapurna seems to have this odd notion that producing a thousand t-shirts is somehow good enough, despite the fact that, time and time again, they are sold out in a matter of moments. That little campfire patch is reprinted around once a year, but it goes out of stock as soon as you see the Reddit post about it. At one point, they put out a vinyl press of the soundtrack, and it sold out literally three minutes after it was ready to order. The problem with Outer Wilds merch is so bad that scalpers have taken notice, pouncing on anything that Annapurna tries to produce, and reselling it on eBay for triple the price. You want this vinyl album now? Well, get ready to pay 250 bucks for it. I mean, how do you look at the fan base that is in the millions and think, well, a thousand prints should be good enough? Annapurna's lack of proper supply chains at this point is just an insult to the community, and I hope they treat other developers with better respect in this regard. Oh. Huh. Fortunately, fan-made merch and other official outlets have picked up some of the slack. The Yeti sold a great Outer Wilds t-shirt for AGDQ 2023, and while it was only out for a limited time, they had enough in stock that it was easy to just casually order the shirt. Fangamer has a bunch of official Outer Wilds merch, and while it's kind of expensive, it's still available even today. Bricky was such a big fan that he put out an Outer Wilds shirt for his own merch store. I know there are other streamers that did the same. There's all kinds of designs on Etsy. Hell, t-shirt pressing is popular enough that you could probably find somebody in your neighborhood who could press whatever design you wanted. Or find somebody that can sublimate your design onto a coffee mug, or a tumbler, or a mouse pad, or a keychain or a bookmark, or a makeup bag, or socks. Make the design you want it to be. There's a ton of designs and a ton of artwork. So many wallpapers, posters, character designs. Wait, I am 8-Bit put out an art book? Damn, of course it sold out. 
Of course, there's a ton of music and remixes. I'm sure Undertale fans can talk about how hard their scene goes. And well, I don't want to poke that bee's nest, but like that game, the Outer Wilds community understands just how much the game's soundtrack absorbs and reflects the emotions of the game itself. Like the community itself, Andrew Prawlow was just as much a fan of the experience, even more so as he was part of the creative process. In August 2022, almost a year after Echoes of the Eye was released, he put out Lost Reels, a deluxe soundtrack with six brand new songs, partially remixes, partially new material inspired by the original sources. He explained what motivated him. For the Lost Reels, I did the essentially the same thing I did with the reprise, but I wrote a whole record within the record essentially so how you find the dlc um within the game like the the sequel to the game is built in the game itself like i basically wrote a record that is a reflection of the echoes of the eye soundtrack that comes after uh the original soundtrack ends so it's like this huge deluxe edition album with all these new um reflective pieces on it where i could kind of just take things where i hadn't yet um, in the game and kind of just look back on it um, all this time later and just uh, share it with everyone. It was really like inspiring to finally look back on this since when I finished 
the Lost Reels, or when I finished Echoes of the Eye, like it was like losing a bunch of friends. The characters in the game felt like friends to me at that point because I had been working on this game for a decade. Um, so it was, I mean, bittersweet, but really wonderful to have another chance to come back and um, spend some time with them again. really talk about the Outer Wilds community without talking about playthroughs. People who have played Outer Wilds understand how its knowledge-gated presentation hurts its replayability. When you know all of the answers, there's nothing else left to discover. You can beat the game from a new playthrough in a single loop if you already know what you're doing. There are achievements and other gaps in your computer logs to fill in, and it's certainly worthwhile to find all the different bits of information you might have missed. But when it's over, it's over. Overall, it's okay to have a game that isn't exactly replayable, as long as the overall first-time experience was memorable enough. And almost everybody agrees it was certainly memorable and worthwhile. But what you may not know is that the Outer Wilds community soon found a way to replay the game in another way, watching first-time experiences through the eyes of others. While nobody would play the game exactly the same way as you, the unique perspective is part of the point. People approach problems in different ways, and that leads to unusual solutions to some of the problems that few viewers might expect. Adventures out there! Yeah. Yeah. Can we make it to... Let me land. Yes! Oh my god! Did that work? Okay, that one's getting close. It's about, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Is there a hose, is there a hose, is there a hose, is there a hose? There, there is, there is. So it kinda, this is gonna go so wrong, but it's like right there. Just follow your scout. Oh, baby, this can't, this, maybe, 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 maybe. Oh, ah, I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm super fucking dead, baby. No, I'm not, I'm a genius. Oh shit! People react differently to different elements of the game. Some players don't figure out the whole supernova thing until several loops in, 
Maybe they were hanging out on Giant Steep where the atmosphere blocks their view of the sun. Oh, Flip, buckle up. What? I think that means I was consumed by the giant tornado. Maybe they were underground in Ember Twin trying to find the sunless city. Maybe they just died of unnatural causes before they completed a full loop. Even after discovering that moment for the first time, they might not even catch on to the end time song playing in the background as their one minute warning music. On the flip side, everybody hates that sound that happens when you get crushed by the rising sand on Ember Twin. Will I have died for no reason? I will have died for no reason. <laughs> oh! Oh, that's kind of nasty! Oh my god! All of these different aspects of a playthrough gives viewers a new, unique experience into the game that could still feel like replaying it over again. I've seen at least a dozen different playthroughs, and most of them have characteristics that I still remember today, like Gradient Gaming's intelligent takes on how the story and gameplay elements fit together. So they were in class. Okay. So this tells me that their death was sudden. Deftly solving pieces logically. I feel like the sun was not that color before. And how he has a cool head while figuring this stuff out. Thank you. Shoot that. Thank you. No, no, no pictures. I just need you to be there. I need to land here. Boom. Well, except when it comes to the scary parts. Oh, no, I don't, I don't like it. 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 My headlights don't freaking work on it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Or two notes, calm demeanor. Should be a pathway somewhere here. His amusing on the last one recap clips at the beginning of each video. On the last one. <laughs> and now the next. And his dedication to always cut his videos to be exactly one loop, even if he ends up dying two minutes in. Don't do the same thing again. Don't do it. Don't do it. Point Crow, a more popular streamer with his likable personality. Oh, I'm going way too fast! No, 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 no! I lived! I lived! I lived! Holy shit! Oh my god, I lived! His interaction with his chat. Oh, I have a bad idea. Chat, I have a bad idea. I just wanted to let you know that the idea is bad before I attempt it. Generally understanding the game. Wait a second. Do you guys remember when I couldn't find the tower? Like, I think it falls. That's my leading theory. Always starting off the stream with a ceremonial marshmallow. And I'll explain more in a second, but whenever we're in a time loop, we always like to roast a marshmallow. Spending something like an hour to try to land on the sun station. Oh. Oh. oh my god, I did it. Oh, let's go, dude. And that time he actually forced his friend to leave the stream because he wanted to watch him play the game himself. Wait, Trey, you haven't played this? Trey. I have not even finished with this, and it has to be one of my all-time favorite games. I think you would love it. And if you could do me a favor and stop watching my stream, so you don't get spoiled. I mean, to pause the stream. No, no, no. This is so important to me. Um, Trey, please, for the love of God, if I could ask anything of you besides reading One Piece, it would be to play this game. Becca bites and her goofy fireside intros. There's our new pilot. I'm sure you're raring to take off. Oh, good. You're up. Are you ready to get started? For unusual approaches to solutions. Okay, they definitely don't die. This is a true statement. Okay, and if the elevator is here, then I'm right. The elevator is there, there's a fucking elevator. Yes. Don't count my else before they hatch though. I'm still worried there's gonna be somebody like trolling that area. Okay. Oh, did I make it? What was right there and I made it. And the way she just completely breaks down at the more emotional moments of the game. The gnome I never got to see it for themselves, but thanks to their efforts and technology. <sighs> A heart that was able to reach the eye of the universe. Or Symbol Lily. <gasps> oh! oh my god. Soviet Womble. No, my. Why would you program your ship to fly straight into the sun? Are you dumbasses? Are you? Joseph Anderson. That was a close one. <laughs> Bacon off tricks. Nope, 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 nope. Oh crap. Oh, there goes that. You won't let me die. 
Ooh, that was a lot of damage. RT gain. You destroyed the fabric of space time? What? <laughs> what did I do? What? What music's that? Is that a fucking kazoo? Gen Z. Okay. Yeah, that was gonna happen, wasn't it? That, yeah. Yeah. Whoopsie. Can I still? Nope. Nothing is working right now in this time. And oh my god! I thought my ship was broken, but it's... <laughs> well, I mean, it is, but also... Um... Ricky. Fuck it. <gasps> it's... They, they, they set it up! Set up some payoffs! Set up some payoffs! God, this game is so fucking good! Atrioc. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Tonner Dog. Alright, cut this out, boys. <laughs> I've seen them all, yet that barely scratches the surface of incredible playthroughs that are out there on the internet. I found most of them through the Interloper Discord. Yes, there is actually a Discord server dedicated to finding and watching Outer Wilds playthroughs. Anytime a streamer with enough fans started an Outer Wilds run on Twitch, they'd create a new channel and watch the stream live, commenting on the reactions as they went. Though, I was more a fan of the VODs channel, finding new playthroughs to see on YouTube. Becca Bites even discovered her own playthrough on the channel, and joined in on the conversation, sharing her newfound obsession of absorbing Outer Wilds content and playthroughs. A YouTuber by the name of Ellis posts supercuts of mostly Outer Wilds playthroughs, which is good for people who don't mind watching 2-3 to three hours of a playthrough, but don't want to spend the whole 10-15 to 15 hours of VOD footage. His channel already has 15k subscribers from a year of posting supercuts. Point Crow even commented on how uncertain he was as to whether he could continue playing the game on his Twitch stream. Uh, but this has to be one of the most creative games I've played in ages. I actually just don't even have time. Like, even if I wanted to stream this, I can't. Uh, because there's like, it's, it's Q4. What happens is that ad advertising rates go way up. AKA, um, you make more money uh, per advertisement views. And so you kind of really ramp up your production of videos. But you get paid more for, uh, for the advertisement uh, ad watches on your videos. Your time becomes more valuable because you ramp up production. So it's really hard to justify playing a game because I, I, you know, it's like I have fun and everything, but I do run a business. And that's kind of, you know, I've, I have employees I pay and everything. So um, it's the not fun reality of streaming where it's like sometimes you can't, even though you enjoy a, a game a lot, sometimes you can't play it. Since it wasn't the type of content he usually plays, and he wasn't getting the numbers he was expecting. That is, until he posted his VOD stream on his YouTube channel. Chat, we can do the, the whole YouTube intro thing for the for the VODs. Um, which, by the way, one of the main motivations behind streaming Outer Wilds, and I can't say this enough, is I, I some of you guys will remember that I kind of gave up halfway through, right? Because I was like, man, I don't know if this is like good for stream or whatever. Um, and then I just kind of fell in love with it and didn't care. Um, it's just the overwhelming support it was just like I, I want to say it was it was two factors. One, there was a Reddit post of like people just absolutely loving the playthrough, and then the other thing was the VOD frogs, right? It might not be the most viewed live stream, the most popular live streams that I've done, right? But the amount of love for not only the game but the playthrough, my stream from the VOD frogs who watched the Outer Wilds playthrough, just makes me so happy. Like it, it just made me like continue on. I was like, man, dude, like, like may maybe I'm not like making people happy live. I, I am for sure, but maybe it's not the most popular live. But you know what? The people that really like the vods, the vod frogs, this one, like this playthrough is for them. <laughs> like this, this is this is the playthrough for them. The first two hours plus vod got almost a hundred k views, which is way higher than the average five to fifteen k views he gets for most of his vods. And it's frankly an unreal amount of views for any sort of VOD channel. Connor Dog just posted his own supercut of his Outer Wilds run, and it's already up to 200,000 views after only two days. This is the fan base. This is the Outer Wilds community, and they are in full force in whatever channel they find themselves in, watching every bit of Outer Wilds content that they can. 
playthroughs, video essays, music, merchandise, artwork, anything. And while that last little Easter egg may be Outer Wild's swan song, a full five years after its release, its impact will be felt for decades. Outer Wilds will be revered by its community, all because of everybody involved. And to all of them, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Mobius, for dreaming up and creating such an awesome game. Thank you, Andrew, for creating a fantastic and unique soundtrack and making music such a central part of the game. Thank you to the Interloper Discord for giving me a bunch of cool playthroughs to watch. And thank you to the streamers for bearing their emotions and putting them out there for everybody to see. Thank you to the rest of the community for moderating social media platforms and putting out your fan-made artwork and music. Thank you to the entire Outer Wilds community for driving this game where it should be. And thank you for watching one man ramble on about his favorite video game.